So let's have a look at symmetrical modeling in Houdini. And symmetrical modeling is the case where you have an object which is the same, either the top and the bottom are symmetrical, or the left and the right, or maybe all uh, three directions. And let me demonstrate how you can save time modeling this kind of object in Houdini. And to do that, we're just going to use a simple box. And I'm going to turn it into a polygonal mesh. Now, in this case, let's assume uh, that, in fact, this object is symmetrical in all its directions. So every corner here is going to have the same bit of modeling. So the first thing we need to do is create just a single corner of this box. So I'm going to do that using the clip sop. And what the clip sop does is take a plane, which is defined by this direction and a distance from the origin, uh, and it uses that to clip out by default all of the primitives that are below the plane. So it's actually splitting these polygons so that it fits perfectly onto the plane as we can see. So I can duplicate that while the second clip in and clip it using a different axis. And now we've got a quarter of the original uh, box and we can also add a final clip which takes it in the final direction. And now we've got an eighth of the box. Now, obviously, we'd only bother with all of these clip operations if the thing is symmetrical in every single direction. Uh, you could just as well just do with one or two clips. So now we need to know how to put it back together. And I'm going to put it back together before I start modeling because I want to demonstrate a very neat trick in Houdini. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a mirror, a mirror sop, like so. And again, we're going to duplicate that, lay down a second mirror sop, change the direction, and then duplicate that using Control C, Control V. There we go and connect it in and make that in the final direction. So we now have our cube back again. Now one of the neat things about Houdini is that I can template any of these nodes. So I can click on this second block in on this node here <coughs> and that's then templated, which means if I move my display and edit flag here to the end of these clips, we can still see the rest of the box. And when I model, so let's insert some edge loops here. Let's insert one there, one there, one there. And then let's select these four. And then let's poly extrude them. And I'm going to do that globally. So get rid of local control. And let me just move these out. And I'm going to give them maybe four divisions as I do that, and then maybe select this loop, scale that out like so, and then finally select just this point here, and then peak that like so. And we can see that that's being replicated by this series of mirrors so that the final operation gives us an entirely symmetrical object. And note that by default the mirror operation has this consolidate sections enabled, which means that the points where we split the polygon apart, where we split the box apart, are automatically fused together when we rejoin it. Another useful feature of these mirror sops is, let's go back to my peak here, if I were to say, select uh, these faces that are at the end here and create a group from them. So I'm creating a group geometry and I've created a group called group one. And we can see that that has, here we are, three primitives in group one, just those three faces. But if we go back to the end of the mirror operations, we can see we've got 24 primitives in group one. Well, there are eight of these uh, corners 
and therefore 3 8 to 24. So the group is being propagated through those mirrors so that when we get down to here, uh, that group consists of all of those uh, faces on every single corner. And that can come in useful for later modeling. Let's now turn that off and let's do something else. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how to symmetrically model something which isn't just four-sided. So it's uh, an object which has a number of sections which rotate around the origin and form a cylindrical type shape. So let's start uh, by creating a grid. Uh, I'm going to dive down. Let's reduce the number of rows to three by three, let's say. And we're going to have it on the YZ plane. And let's reduce the size to. That'll do. And I'm going to move it out a little bit like this. Now let's say that we're going to have an object which consists of ten sides, which are going to be made up eventually of this grid. So I need some clips again. So let me put down a clip. But what do I put here for the direction? Well, the answer is I put sine 360 divided by the number of si sides, which in this case is going to be 10. Uh, the second component is going to be 0. And the third component is going to be cos 360 divided by 10, like so. So that's cutting off one half of this. And then I need to control C, control V this again. Uh, and in fact, I've made a mistake here because, of course, what I actually want is half the angle. So I need 360 divided by 20 if I've got 10 sides, and 360 divided by 20 if I've got 10 sides here. And then the second one is the same. Let me just make these 20 again. Except that the first component here is a negative one, and instead of deleting primitives above the plane, we keep primitives below the plane. So that's now created a, a slice of our grid, which we're going to use later on to model. And we're going to show you how to complete this object. And we can use the copy sop. So let me lay down copy sop. Now you're probably more used to the copy sop being used to instance geometry onto points. Uh, it has a second usage which is just to produce a number of copies. So we're going to produce 10 copies and we need to ro rotate each copy 360 divided by 10 degrees. And we can see that gives us our completed object. There is an additional step which you need to take with this kind of symmetrical modeling where you're not using mirror and that is to use a fuse at the end because those sides won't be fused together by default. So we can see that that's worked. We had 90 points to start with and then we have 60 points down here. So just to demonstrate this working, let's put the template flag on there again and put the display flag on the end of my clips. And I can uh, just uh, maybe insert some edge loops here. Let's do that. Let's insert a couple of edge loops like so. Let's select these faces that I've just created and then let's just extrude them again. I'm going to use global control to extrude them out and we can see that we're getting a sort of cog-shaped pattern. And just as before, if I were to group uh, these faces, uh, then we'd start off obviously here with just four primitives in the group. But once the copy is finished, uh, we have 40 because each of those copies is inheriting the group, like so. Well, you might even find it annoying to have that geometry in the background here as a wireframe. Uh, you can, in fact, add a transform at the end here. Whoops. And we can then move this off 
to the side. Let's put the template flag on here, and uh, that's, been, that's been hit under. Incidentally, I, I didn't mean to lock that node. And we can see that we can model away here and see off to the side here uh, the results of our modeling. Indeed, uh, we can even put the display flag on here and have our selection flag on here and reverse uh, the wireframe. So our operations now will be on this piece of geometry here uh, and the final geometry we'll see as the solid over here. Uh, that's a bit trickier because it's it's quite easy to accidentally select something else so you're safe for having the display flag on here. So that's uh, some tips on symmetrical modeling in Houdini.